very few people that had the wheel, that had firearms, that had all these things that had already been achieved in the rest of the world had made their way to this place. So now watch. Okay. Here's how it worked. Right. So you're going to hear. So I, I presume that you have some skepticism of this claim as most people would, especially the, the Columbus haters who are out there. All right. I don't really have any skepticism <clears throat> about it, to be honest with you. Okay, sense. so let me let me describe to you why I think this is true. Okay. And then you can tell me whether you, you agree or not. All right. Uh, we are hunter-gatherers. We haven't settled down yet, early humans. And we're basically wandering. We're following the herds, all right? And then the Ice Age hits. Well, what is an Ice Age? An Ice Age means it is so cold that when the moisture evaporates from the oceans, goes to the clouds, the clouds go over the land, it doesn't rain, it snows. And the snow falls and then it stays. So the water that had lifted up from the ocean does not return to the ocean. It accumulates on the land. And this accumulation when it's significant and sustained, we call glaciers. Glaciers is not itself a snowfall. It is compressed snow that's basically changed state into this, this ice river that flows very slowly back to the ocean. But the oceans are getting drained faster than they're getting replenished. So during the ice age, the ocean levels dropped exposing the Bering Strait land bridge between Asia and what is now Alaska, basically North America. The, the, our ancestors who come out of Africa go into Europe. Some stayed. Others kept wandering. Some stayed low above the Mediterranean. Others went high. They populate Asia. They keep walking because there's a land bridge there. They don't even know it's a bridge. It's just more land. So they walk and they enter North America. And from there, that's kind of the only way you can go is south at that point. The weather gets a little better. The Ice Age ends. The glaciers melt back into the oceans. The ocean's level, ocean levels rise, closing the land bridge, stranding a branch of the human species for 10,000 years. Those humans who made it across that land bridge and spread out into North America, Central America, South America, have only a few families as their parent genetic, uh, as their um, genetic origin, okay? Only, it's like, the, some research says it's like eight family lineages populated the entire North and South American continents. Wow. Then the land bridge breaks. Now you have Europe, Asia, Africa, and North and South America, and they know nothing of one another. Two separate branches of the human species. The Vikings notwithstanding, maybe they found, came over, they didn't. I, I'm, they, even if they did, their influence was near zero relative to the Europeans. So we're talking about influence here. This is a branch. Had this continued, this is how you speciate. This is why the species on Australia, that's why you have mammals there that have pouches. All right, no other mammals do that. They s split off and they evolve their own way. Okay, so 10,000 years is not enough to grow three heads or, you know, 12 fingers, but our species is separate. Now, Columbus crosses the Atlantic, makes contact with humans. This is the first time that has happened in 10,000 years. We have rejoined two branches of the human species. We are now one common genetic group. And that genetic crossbreeding now continues to this day. We, we fly to any corner of the world and mate, okay? And the mating already began immediately. Yes, there were diseases that Columbus brought to North America, much written about that. Less written is that he brought syphilis back to Europe. First cases of syphilis of 1492. Whoa. And then it they skyrocketed. They got syphilis from the Native Americans? Yes. What, did they have no problem with it? Well, I, I don't know the details of how 
the physiology of the natives huh. dealt with that, or whether it mutated. Uh, you know, I don't, right. I don't. And there may people who know that. I'm not among them. That's fascinating. But if just look at you look at the graph of syphilis, reported syphilis cases in Europe. It all began 1492 when he came back. Whoa. So wh what I'm saying is this was a hugely significant event, the rejoining of the branches of the human species. But yeah. No, I would imagine that that makes sense. That is the most important event then. And by the way, Native Americans, you know this famous, infamous problem with m metabolizing alcohol, okay, with Native Americans. Mm -hmm. You know who else has that problem? The Chinese. They do? Yes. Really? Yes. Yes. So it's an Asian issue. Well, so who stayed in a So you look at who populated North and South America after the, you know, before the land bridge. It's whoever was right at the edge of Asia. Right. Then the land bridges. So, so, so Asians and, and North American and, and uh, the natives of North and South America have more in common with each other because of this than most other pairs of groups you might grab around the world. But my point is, obviously, we, there's a lot to blame Columbus for, but he just happened to be the guy who did it first. Europe was coming to the New World no matter what. There, everybody was trying to find a, a faster trade route to the Indies. And so if, would, if it wasn't Columbus, it would have been Arnold Schmednick, whatever. It doesn't matter. Somebody did that. And the rest is, as they say, history. Wow. So personally... I think it is the most significant thing to happen in our species. Otherwise, we'd still be two-stranded branches of humans.